Welcome, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this Cinema 4D tutorial we will talk about Boolean subtractions. We will go through um, a few issues that uh, come with it and look at some workarounds um, like those. And um, also we will look at how to do building cross sections by using the camera clipping. And um, we will also have a look at alternatives like the spline mask, which does a better job in some cases than the Boolean operator. And in the end, we will do an example that combines the Boolean operator with subdivisions and also Expresso to get a little um, kind of contraction effect. But first of all, let's talk about how Booleans work or how you would set up such an operation. I take a cube as the main object and other objects should be subtracted. I go to display row shading just to see the edges. And let's have one object for a start that is supposed to subtract from the box. The Boolean operator is here and it's by standard set to A subtract B. There are other modes we won't discuss and for modeling most of the time you want to have a main object which is A um, and there is B that gets subtracted from it. And you see as soon as the cylinder enters the volume of the cube then there is some um, yeah, some subtraction going on. If you wanted to add more objects that are supposed to be subtracted, then you have to make sure they don't intersect. And you cannot put them just in the list. You would put either them as a sub, um, like a, as a child of the uh, one object, or you would drag it out quickly and put it into a null object that is called subtraction. You don't need to name it, but it's just uh, clearer that way and everything you put inside the null object now will be subtracted. Again, if they collide, it will not work anymore. Um, also, you start to see where problems might occur because there's lot of triangulation going on. If you uh, go to boolean you can also tell it to be a single object so after converting it won't uh, consist of two parts or, th or several parts but just one part. Um, like the side walls and the cap would be one. Whereas when I go back and don't say create single object and hit convert you see that we have now numbers objects that are not connected. All right, let's go on with how to uh, go around those issues. All right, let's first talk about um, how the Boolean operator works. It's usually um, done so that you can um, subtract objects from one another and um, it's also a bit of a beginner's trap actually because many people who do not want to learn modeling um, like the right way so to speak they um, are really quick at going to the boolean operator once they for example want to bring in additional detail and this comes as a at a rather hefty price namely it does this triangulation. Now, of course, you can go to bool and say, please hide those new edges, but it doesn't really um, remove them. So as soon as you, for example, convert this object and um, look at the, like what it's created, you will see as soon as you press UE, which is remove n-gons, you will see they are still there. And also if we go back a little and say I want just a single object and yeah, maybe some people might say I want high quality and stuff, but it's still 
brings those uh, issues. So if we go UE again, you see we have that triangles again. And those triangles are really a problem because now when you start um, going further with the model, for example, you would like to do some beveling, then um, there will be collisions. So I start off and it may look okay, but as the bigger the radius gets, the more problems occur and you see stuff starts to stick out. And it basically didn't work in the beginning either because like this kind of geometry with those diagonal lines is not uh, good for any kind of model. You would uh, try to avoid this for beveling, you would like to avoid this for subdivision modeling, uh, then all, all of a sudden it looks really rubbish. So um, I will show you some things how you can use the Boolean operator in a um, proper way. Um, so it, it has its, um, how to say, there are reasons why people would use it, use it but in many cases um, I wouldn't. So first question, when I have um, more than one object I want to subtract from my Boolean operator, then you cannot just put it in the list kind of, it will only update to the second one. It will ignore anything which comes later. And uh, what you can do is you can stack them in each other, but then they are kind of in a parent-child relationship, they are in a hierarchy. So what you could do alternatively is you just take a new null, call it subtract. You don't have to, it's just cleaner that way. And you put all the objects in there that should be subtracted. Then you put it under Boolean, bring it in the right order. So first the object you want to keep and then the subtraction objects. And that's, I think, a clean way to, to bring them in. Of course, this is not unbreakable. It kind of gets crazy when they overlap. And the problem we discussed earlier remains. So um, when you look at the Boolean and we show these edges, you will see that it's kind of um, messy. So the edges we get here are not really good for further processing. So what would be alternatives? Now it might look tedious, but um, it's a good idea to set up our object um, using a proper topology and this means edges. So what I would suggest is you start off in flatland and just uh, we use a little plane. Now for example when I have this and I want to subtract stuff, I can just delete its polygons. See like this? and I can still select all of those polygons, extrude them upwards, and it just requires some planning, like how many divisions do I need, and then I get um, the same kind of effect. Of course, it doesn't animate, but if we're just talking about modeling, this would be probably the cleaner way. If you don't need or don't want that many segments, you could alternatively also set up a plane with uh, no segments, just one, and convert it, and then you could cut in there. So KL is the loop cut, and then you could define where you want your cuts, and then you would delete out what you don't need. Um, if you want to put this into an um, subdivision, then of course it will look a little different and you have to stabilize the shape by going to KL again, which is loop cuts and just um, yeah, define the shape. Now you see we are quite flexible with that um, technique. You can get way more complex shapes than with what you would um, get from a Boolean operation. So in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of yeah, the whole industry, it's uh, probably the way to go. So do not Boolean is true in many cases. Now, how do I bring in some round holes? Um, 
that requires a bit more planning. Let's say I have a plane again. I just give it four by four segments and I would like to kind of bite out a circular shape. Now, of course, I could use a Boolean, but uh, another way of doing this would be to just take a disk and I will place this disk right here and um, make it a little smaller, maybe like this. Now I will just give it eight segments and two disk segments. We could also set the disk segments to one and just um, increase the inner radius. And now the idea would be to just um, delete the overlapping polygons from the plane, like so. Um, take both objects and say connect objects and delete so it's uh, one object now and we go to edge mode hit B for bridge and just connect the opposite opposite um, edges so if I delete the superfluous points I have now one object which will look um, good in, um, in subdivisions as well. First of all, I want to, well, we can have a quick look, of course, it will look like this. Um, but let me go back and maybe I want to scale this uh, inner circle. And you will see when I scale it from here, it will not behave the way I want it. So I go to modeling axis and now I move it along Z in this case. And now I can scale it like this. The closer I bring those two rings together, um, the sharper it will be. So let me just show you. That's the way. And now I can press Q to just disable the subdivision generator and put some more cuts through this just so that I don't get those round corners. Just press K and say you want a plane cut, so KJ and you can set the plane mode to world and just stabilize it here for example maybe also in the other corners so this would be the way you can also look at it in isoparms mode how I would model um, such a shape basically and then you take um, whatever liberties you want in deleting out stuff whatever and you get all sorts of shapes it of course requires some learning but if you want to dig deeper in this topic I think I have um, plenty of modeling tutorials on my channel also there's subdivision basics which would go further but this could be a really good alternative to the boolean operator. It just requires some learning. Also, um, let's just assume you have set up an object, in this case a cylinder with many subdivisions and you want to cut in holes. And now of course it's tempting to just say, okay, I create an object like let's say in capsule and place it right where I need it and then I take a boolean operator and subtract those from each other but the thing is the same you get loads of ugly triangles right and an alternative to that is just to take the cylinder delete the polygons you want to get rid of and in the end you just put it into a a subdivision and that way you get a nice opening as well it will look like this or maybe like that and it all depends on your planning if you plant your object wisely like the subdivisions were uh, like suitable to what you want to do I'm talking about whether they stretch or how wide they are 
then there's uh, lots of things you can do with them later on without using booleans. Right? So like that. And if you want to make this smaller, you could also just press I, go inwards like this, and delete it. And then you hold down Alt and click on subdivision, and again, you made it go inwards, like that. All right, I just went to the content browser to um, just get a house. And um, what I want to talk about next is a three-dimensional cross-section of a building. And um, the naive approach of this would be to just set up a gigantic box and um, just subtract them, both objects from each other by just putting them into a boolean operator and all the geometry of your house would go into a null uh, for your building and the cube would be the subtraction object and once you put them in the right order you would see that the box is kind of cutting through the building but even in, if in this very simple building model you see it gives errors and it's kind of um, not really stable. And in a real uh, world scenario this would um, even take ages and it wouldn't look any better. So the boolean operator is not really made for complex uh, things. That's why I would suggest an alternative. Um, you just take the house model and you probably know this when you go really close to an object then the clipping will uh, kind of cut the edges of your um, of your corners or yeah, the, your geometry gets eaten by the camera and we will use this um, effect I can't show it right now um, by just diving inside a camera and setting the near clipping up so it's kind of taking away the geometry and this is done in a very very robust manner this is totally precise and it doesn't really bother about the geometry like it's not doing cuts it's just blending out what's too close to the camera so once you put the camera right in front of your building for example like this you can also clear out the values and um, maybe center it like this and then you can still uh, refine your cross section now if you lit the, the house um, properly then some inside areas will probably be um, or hopefully be black let me just illustrate my point Let's say we have a sky and uh, you want global illumination to go inside. I would never light it like this, but it's just a really fast way of um, visualizing my point. Then you will see that um, our cross section is now lit correctly. And if there are still some areas that catch um, some light for some reason, then you would have to paint over this. Right? So this would be something you could still do in Photoshop or so. Alright, let's talk about the next uh, scenario. Maybe you want to do an animation of a an object that um, runs through a cube. I take a cylinder and what I want to do is just move the cylinder through here. And um, yeah, you will see that it kind of works, but if you being really um, yeah, not easy to satisfy in terms of quality, then you may see some um, problems here as well. And that is, um, you see, it's it's kind of shaky. Like uh, when I move it, like the um, topology of my 
object gets changed all the time and it's kind of flickery and I wouldn't be sure if I do more complex stuff with this, such as beveling, if those triangles are really that good. So what would be an alternative to this kind of procedure? Um, let's just disable it and talk about the better method in my view. Uh, you just take a rectangle and you also set up a circle. So again, we are choosing a two-dimensional workflow, um, which is just more solid. And there is another Boolean operator, which is called spline mask. Just hit shift C and type spline mask and put both shapes in there. It's A minus B. Um, at least once you set it to A subtract B and say along Y in this case. So what happens here, it's rock solid and if I move it, you see that this is kind of um, creating a spline that is able to um, join uh, both shapes. So uh, once I have that set up, I can put it into the extrude the extrude should go upwards and um, now I can for example put the circle right in the middle again and use a vibrate tag to move it set it to regular enable position let's change it by 200 and just move it by 0 0.3 so that way I have a animation that does this and if you give it enough time, then you will see it change. Uh, it, it will just run forever. So um, I like this method better because it's cleaner and also um, because I'm more flexible with the geometry that comes out of this. For example, I can still um, put fillet caps on it, which uh, wouldn't be possible in the Boolean um, operator. Um, and yeah, the geometry is way more solid, I think. If you want to change the divisions, you can still go to each component, like the circle, and change how many lines it using, it's using, or say something like uniform. Let me illustrate this point quickly. I can make this go from rough to rather detailed. Yeah. So you should always go through those components and play around with them. Another thing is when you use booleans, you should make sure uh, exactly in what ways you're changing the topology. So when we set up a, a box, for example, um, and I want to subtract some shape from it, and this should still work in a subdivision environment then uh, I may have to make sure some some edges are really um, going together for example the cylinder is set up by eight segments so then I can subdivide my box so these edges meet like this and then my boolean will look much better let's just have a look the cube and the cylinder go in there and you see all of a sudden I have a clean geometry but as soon as I start to move my um, cylinder you will see that the whole thing breaks and it breaks really easily for example if I rotate it the solutions will get less elegant you get loads of weird triangles so but in this limited scenario you can basically see that my cylinder is not working on the whole cube but it's limited to these edges so that's uh, why i used some segments here without segments it would look like this but usually when i cut through something i want to kind of um, reduce the damage it does to my geometry so i make this safe zone right around the cut the advantage now is that it would still work in in subdivisions so you put the boolean into a subdivision and you see it is uh, kind of working we 
have a really harsh edge here though, a hard edge. And we can change this by going to Boolean and just saying create single object. So now um, I'm kind of flexible. Let me just switch that display to isoparms. And I can still change the radius of my cylinder, at least until I touch the edges, then it breaks of course, but within this range I can uh, change it. And we can optimize this even further. So for example, I could change um, the cube's segmentation in height, let's say to one, uh, to two, and the cylinder gets more cuts as well. Um, at least one through the middle and this makes the subdivision thing change. So that's another way and you could animate the cylinders um, size or radius rather with expressions and if you're interested we quickly do this so I will animate it between 20 and 100 no 20 and 80 and we can use Expresso for that. So let's just right click on the cylinder, go to Cinema 4D Tags Expresso. And um, I just put it into my interface so it's less annoying. And um, basically, I want to animate it with time. So make sure you click on this uh, little uh, glasses here and um, just say. Um, time. You could also um, right click, go to Expresso, General and then look at time, but I will mostly use the search field here. And uh, also for debugging it's quite good to see the results, so just type result and drag it in. And once you hit play you will see that it's running up. If it doesn't, go to Calculate and say Animation Refresh. This is uh, turned off by default, so Animation Refresh should be on and then we get a live update here and you can see the time increasing. And what we will do is use a sign function. Now you cannot find sign like that. You have to say you want a trigonometric function. Drag it in there and what we will do now is we will use the sign, so it always ranges between minus one and one. Let's play, you see it goes up, then it goes down. And if we give it maybe 900 frames and drag the slider all across, then you will also see it goes down again. And the nice thing about this motion is that it's rather soft, so it doesn't um, go uh, full speed to one, but it, it kind of breaks before that softly and goes back. And now I would like to um, change the range of this, of course, so it shouldn't be between minus one and one, but I will use a range mapper, which then um, takes it from minus one to one and uses the radii we want, so between 20 and 80. Now I put in the cylinder and I have to tell Cinema what should be changed and it should be the radius. As soon as I connect it, I cannot influence the radius directly. You will see this little triangle here which says I'm influenced by the Expresso setup and once you hit play you will see this going uh, bigger and smaller so it's kind of uh, contracting or so. Now, if you wanted to change the speed of it, you have to just multiply the time, basically make the time faster or slower. And that works by going to user data. It's for example, on the cylinder, I say user data, add user data, and I just write in speed. Now the speed shouldn't be expressed in percent, but rather in real values. I say 0.1 should be the steps. And now I go to user data and I can um, define the speed. If you did a mistake, you go to user data and say manage user data, click on speed again. And then you can say I want a float slider, for example, and it should range between 
0.1 so it's really slow up to 10 let's say default value could be 0.5 and I say OK now I have a nice slider and this user data should be uh, in there as well so I just drag another cylinder node in here and say I want to use it so speed should be multiplied and you just would then say I need a math node doesn't matter when it says add you can change it to multiply and then you just multiply the speed if you drag this into value you now have a nice speed controller just click on cylinder and turn it up you will see it goes really fast and you turn it down and it goes really slow okay that would be one use for animating with um, boolean and uh, also with expresso